morning. I've got to stop turning on and then walking away from the camera, haven't I? I'm looking for something. I can't find it now. Oh, you have to get it. Never mind. How you doing? How is everybody? Everyone all right? Good morning, guys. Hello, who's on? Let me know who's on today. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. How are you feeling? All right. Uh, what should we do today? If the sun's out, can you give me a sun emoji? There's a sun. I think there's a sun emoji. I'm pretty sure there's a sun emoji. Uh, yeah, if the sun's out today, you'll have to send me a sun emoji so that I know that you've got lovely sunny weather. It's gorgeous here in Bristol. Still pretty cold, uh, but at least it looks nice. Hopefully it should warm up later. Oh, you've got sun. Lovely. Oh, lots of you got sun. Amazing. Hello, guys. Hello. Who's on uh, Facebook this morning? Happy Friday. Happy, happy Friday, everybody. Cheers. Cup of tea. Could use your tea emoji if you like. Tea emojis if you're joining me for tea. I haven't got Mason here, he's out, so you won't get bombarded by questions from Mason, as ran random as always. Good morning, yeah, sun but freezing, that's right, it is sun but freezing. Got the shock of my life when I went out. So, um, right, should we, get, should we get going rather than me just chatting? I hope you're all okay. Um, actually, I thought, because it's Friday... I thought, because I missed my days of being a teacher, that I, I might set you some homework. Yeah? Fancy some homework? Give me an emoji. Fancy some homework for the weekend? Come on. Are you in? Do you want some homework? Or actually, do you want to see it first before you agree to it? Yeah, maybe that's the thing. You have to let me know. By homework, I mean it's a little something that you need to make for a play activity. So it's not a lot. It's dead easy. Good morning. Oh, a few of you up to some homework. That's great. Lovely. All right, I'll let you know what it is and then you can decide if you want to join in, basically. That's fair enough, isn't it? Okay, so um, this morning I'm going to talk to you about exploring counting with children, um, which is a really lovely thing to do. And what's, the reason why I really like this and wanted to share this with you today uh, is I've realised that I've been meaning to talk about it for ages and haven't. But also what's nice about it is it's counting without numbers. Um, it's almost like loose, loose parts. It's sort of that accidental counting and sorting activity. And you can do it with all sorts of different age children. Um, and it's nice just to get them exploring while they're young. There's no sort of age limit on it, really. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And I'm going to show you your homework. I'm just going to have a quick go. Good morning. Yeah, maybe someone's saying, my teachers never gave me any choice in homework. No, maybe... I could make it compulsory, couldn't I? I could do that. I could say you can only watch Monday's live if you've done your homework. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Good morning. Oh, that was about my throat. Okay, so this is your homework, guys. Anyone on uh, Facebook, you can swipe the comments across if any comments come up in the way. Um, Instagram, I don't think you can do it. You'll have to have a little go. I've just had people messaging saying that they can't quite see sometimes. Uh, but I think there is a way that you can swipe them across, whatever. Okay, here's your homework, guys. Right, you don't have to do it on a plank of wood. This is just what I had to hand. This is a spare random plank of wood that we had in our garage because my husband cannot bin wood. Loves it. We have more wood than fires, but never mind. Um, so you just need a nice piece of wood. Don't worry if you don't have a piece of wood. Maybe you could cut a nice big piece of card. Anyway, we'll talk about different ways that you could do this later, but I just want to show you. So what's special about this wood is once it's made, it's done. And then I'm going to hold it up. All I've done is used a brown felt tip pen, just bog standard felt tip pen and a ruler. And I've drawn on and I've split the piece of wood up. I don't know if you can see that. Into five sections. One, two, three, four, five. I'm in line with one and not in line with the other camera. So I've broken up the piece of wood to be into five sections. And then on the other side, because it's a nice wide piece of wood, I've broken it up into ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Trust me, there are. I played with it. Um, so you're just gonna. So I've used a piece of wood just because it's what I had to hand. Uh, you may have something else, and once we start talking about it, uh, we can have a little play, and maybe you can have a little play of some ideas of how you could do it. But you're just going to have this piece of wood, five on one side, 
10 on the other. Now I'd really like you to start with 5, even if you think your children have got numbers and mastered 1 to 5, I still think you should have a little play with it. Um, and all it is, that's it really, that's your homework. However, encouraging your children to play with it, the way that I would play with this um, you could introduce numbers if you wanted to, however, what I'd really like you to do is play with it without any numbers, without any digits, without any flashcards, without numbered stones or anything like that, without any numbers just to explore. And the reason why is it's really nice, and this is for children of all ages, is for them to get a really good understanding of number because number accounting it's such a shame that so many um, or so many schools and things have such an emphasis on children being able to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That string of numbers, uh, there's so much emphasis on it when actually there is so much involved in counting. To truly understand number and counting takes a lot of skills, a lot of different skills. There's a lot going on. And that's why with anything you want to teach children, whether it's telling the time, how to share, um, how to write, how to um, how to be considerate, how to be independent, anything like that, teach them through play. And the best way is to let them play with it, let them explore it. And that is the best way for learning. There's loads of research I could go on, but letting your children play with something, play with a concept is a great way of teaching them something. And this is why I'm really keen for children to explore counting and number and value without actually any numbers. It's letting them explore, letting them make, make mistakes, letting them um, question things, letting them practice. It's just brilliant. It's loads of problem solving. There are all sorts just by having a blank. I know, I get a bit passionate, don't I? Uh, it's just really important and it's just a great way of children exploring number and it really embeds the skills and it makes it meaningful, it puts it in context for them, there's all sorts going on. So if we break down children counting, there is counting by rote, which is what I was just saying, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's almost like a pattern, it's almost like a song that the children know those numbers in that string of order which is brilliant. Yes, that's great. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that they can count because there's also one-to-one -one counting. There's having a handful of items. I've got some little white stones here because they're nice and bright. There's having a handful of items like stones, like lids, like anything, and being able to individually count them. So one by one is as they touch it, one, two, three, four, five. Rather than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's not the same. You need them to be able to count one to one to match a number, give them a number to each one of the um, items that they're counting. So you've got all that going on. And then there's being able to count something to five and then being able to link that five, the value of five and what the five digit looks like. So you've got all that going on as well. So it's being able to understand when you when a child sees a number five, the digit five, that that actually has a value and what five looks like. And then there's also the skill.